What's up, everybody? It's Johnny King with another awesome episode of The Johnny King Show. I'm here with my man, Kevin Holtz, uh, who is a business owner, motivational speaker, so many other things uh, that we'll get into. But thanks for being here, buddy. Happy to be here. I'm excited to be on with you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're tuning in from, let the speaker, let the uh, audience know you're tuning in from Cincinnati, Ohio. Midwest. Yeah. Um, and tell a little bit more about, uh, as we start to get into things, just kind of what you do and um, yeah, even a little bit of the backstory that we talked about the other day with how you got into what you're doing and <laughs> doing all commission, kind of rolling the dice, you were all in. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in the financial services industry. Uh, I've been doing that for 13 years. Uh, before getting into the industry, I actually worked in healthcare. I was a nurse before I, I got into it. And I wasn't really looking to get out of healthcare. I was happy with what I was doing. I got a lot of satisfaction from the job. I just happened to run into a friend of mine who uh, was working for the company and doing very well. And I thought it all sounded pretty interesting. I came in for an interview, not expecting much of anything. And I just knew that's where I needed to be. I mean, I could feel it, the energy. I just, I felt like the company was built for me 70 years ago. Like they were like, you know what? One day Kevin Holtz is going to want to work here. You know, um, it was that good of a fit. And uh, I've been doing it ever since and, and absolutely love it. It just, it, it falls right into my wheelhouse. I'm, I'm curious then why, why uh, you were happy with what you're doing, nursing, healthcare. Yeah. Yep. Um, then most, I guess most people would be like, well, why would you have any thoughts to change? Or you were just open to, I mean, were you bored? Or was it just not challenging? What, uh, what was it about that kind of opened your mind to maybe switch? I, uh, I always wanted more in pretty much all areas of life. You know, I yeah. always felt like there was, there was more, you know, there was something bigger, there was something better. Um, and I was again, happy where I was at. Um, but I was interested in maybe real estate or anything I could do to try to like sort of level up. And one thing I'll tell you about healthcare, and again, I love it, is uh, no matter how good of a job I did as a nurse, at no point were they going to be like, man, you've been doing phenomenal. We're going to go ahead and promote you to become a doctor. Yeah. You know, so unless I was ready and willing to go back to school for a whole lot of years, uh, which I quite frankly was not uh, willing, able, anything probably at that point in my life to do so. Um, I knew that a change would have to happen if I really wanted to step up my income and get to another level. So that was really what the, the driver was. It's like, okay, this is good fulfillment. You were happy with it. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was also like, okay, if I want to provide for a future family and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes, yeah, that makes more sense for sure. Um, and then kind of tell, tell the, the listeners about how scary that is to go from, let's say a, a a regular salary to you were a full commission, 100% commission, right? 100% commission. Yeah. So that can be uh, so scary. You know, I, I just didn't feel that way. And I, I, I understand why somebody mm. would, would be nervous to make that kind of switch. I I'm fully aware. And, mm. you know, maybe some of it was just how my life looked then I was single, I wasn't married, didn't have any kids. Um, so maybe that was part of it, but I still, sure. you know, I was living in an apartment. I had a car, I had bills, I, you know, just like anybody else. Um, but, um, I feel like I would probably have worked even harder and done an even better job if I did have people relying on me, quite frankly, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, my mom was like, listen, make sure you hang on to your nursing license. So you've mm -hmm. got something to fall back on. And I said, mom, if I'm going to go back to nursing, it'll be to volunteer my time. It won't for, be for pay. And I let my license lapse immediately. Mm. Um, I just didn't see it not working out, you know? And it doesn't mean it was easy because when I got in, I felt like it was a pretty rude awakening. Yeah. Um, I realized, wow, I'm going to have to work a lot harder than I thought I was going to, you know, being really <laughs> young coming in. I think yeah. I had a lot of um, confidence that I probably shouldn't have had, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and uh, I found out I was humbled pretty quickly uh, once, once I got started, but I was willing to put in the work to make up for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have mentors off the bat or were you kind of thrown to, thrown yeah, to the wolves? Right and... off the bat. Yeah. Um, plenty of mentors um, to help guide me through, you know, making decisions and, and the best way to, um, you know, learn the business. Um, it, it, again, it can be scary, but thankfully I was, uh, involved in a structure with a company where they had a roadmap 
with directions every step of the way on how to get from A to B to Z um, in the final destination. And we literally had a playbook in front of us that showed us how to get there and, and mm. you know, best practices. Pretty cool when you don't have to recreate the wheel. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's not really my cool. forte. I'm not the most creative person, but yeah. if you give me a task, you don't have to ask if it got done. It's, it's done. No doubt about it. So you would, you have a high sense of integrity with your word. Kind of like if you say you're going to do it, you're going to follow through. Absolutely. Which is kind of what's led it, led you to feeling just a total sense of belief in yourself. Like, okay, I'm committing to this. Yeah. Like mom, I'm going to let this lapse with my nursing uh, license and I'm just going to go for this. And so you didn't have, yes, you were, you were humbled, but you, you didn't see it not working out or correct. Right. And, and there were a lot of examples uh, of people that made it work before me. So it's not yeah. like I was the first to do it. I think that would be pretty nerve wracking. Sure. Uh, charting mm -hmm. and uh, a course that's never been on before. Um, mm -hmm. But I was following behind a bunch of other people up the mountain. So it, it didn't seem, you know, you could look up and see, oh, wow, those guys have already made it up there. I'm just further down than them, but I'm on my way. You know, yeah. I just, I got to just keep on one foot and right one foot in front of the other and yeah. i'll get there you know where, where do you think that because i think a lot of people don't have that inherent like attitude of just full-on belief in themselves and that confidence uh so much that we've talked about and i can see it and everything that you do is like man it's just it's mindset it's psychology right if you uh -huh. don't have that off the bat and of course you can learn it but you've learned a ton of it but it also seemed like you had it even at a young age you know, did that come from your parents? Did that just come from God-given gift? What did you feel like you attribute your psychology to belief in yourself? And at, a, at an early age, I, I don't know that I've got a great answer for you. Um, I would say, uh, you know, I would say a gift from God for sure, because, um, you know, my, my family had it difficult coming up quite often, you know, more often difficult than easy that I can tell you for sure. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say that it was necessarily handed down to me from my parents, although they were wonderful examples of in every way, shape and form. Uh, but, um, no, I, I, I wouldn't say that the mindset came from them per se, you know, maybe just an eagerness to prove yourself and eagerness to get out there and, and just do it. Right. Um, yeah. I, I think one thing that was always kind of interesting is, um, you know, I, I grew up in an area that was a, a pretty nice area. Um, we didn't have a whole lot. Uh, personally, my, my family, um, but I got to see some of the nice things. You know what I mean? I had some friends that had boats at the yacht club and we'd go there on the weekend and we would arrive in a convertible, you know? And again, that wasn't my personal experience, but I got to taste a little bit of that. And I was like, okay, yeah, like this is, I, I, <laughs> I could do this. I have a boat. I, I could drive a convertible. Those things seem pretty nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Where a yeah. lot of times, if you don't have it, you don't get to experience it either. So you don't really know what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So you got right. a little taste of it, which connected you to the emotion of, you got this, this could be fun. This is nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very, very cool. Oh, then tell to like, how long have you been doing what you're doing? How long did it take to, to like, where are you sitting now? Cause like you said, you have a lot of people that you manage and you oversee, like give a little bit of point A of like how that was to be humbled, but then how long you've been working to build up what you've got going on now. Yeah, so um, I worked out of the Cleveland office for about nine years, um, started at, you know, the bottom, like everybody else, you know, worked as a, an individual producer, mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to start getting into leadership and sort of building teams and moving my way up from there. Um, had an opportunity to run a satellite office uh, for the office that I was working out of. Um, and then after about nine years, coming up on nine years, somewhere around there, I had the opportunity to work for our corporate offices, mm -hmm. where I worked as a sales director and a recruiting director, and I flew all over the United States and Canada, and I helped them with recruiting and sales and leadership development and just growth within each office. Uh, and it was a really amazing experience. Um, after five quarters of doing that, uh, they gave me the opportunity to take over the territory in Cincinnati for a gentleman mm -hmm. that was retiring and me being from Cleveland and still being in my home state, it just, it made perfect sense. I, I knew it was something I wanted to do, but I didn't think I would have the opportunity to do it in my own backyard. And uh, my wife and I jumped on it. Pretty sweet. Uh, uh, an opportunity you couldn't pass on. It sounds like. Absolutely. How long have you been married? 
uh, 11 years this April. Okay, so a lot of this business has been built though when you've been married, right? Oh yeah, 100%. Which, uh, yeah. which I love I love kind of adding that nuance into it too because it's like, you know, it's there are a lot of single uh, young multimillionaire entrepreneurs um, but they're, you know, it's, it's not that it makes it easy, no doubt, but it's like when you don't have anyone else to have to, you know, manage your time around, you know, a growing family, all those things, it just makes it more challenging. Right. Yeah. So how, you know, how, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just, I was just going to ask how, how has that been, uh, you know, in a positive, but also how have you worked through the challenges that have come with, you know, traveling a lot and being away from home and tr attempting to be present. And, and I just, you know, it seems like you have this high drive to be, you know, a king where you're, you're achieving in all areas of your life, you know, how have you made sure that your marriage also hasn't uh, suffered through the, the growing of your business? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, <laughs> having a wife and kids and then looking back it's like boy this would have been a lot easier you know when i was single right but for me and i think a lot of people um when i talk about this you know when i was single i didn't have as much drive to be quite honest with you you know i mm -hmm. wish i would have worked harder and done more when it was easier but when i got married and i had somebody else depending on me i had to step up mm -hmm. and then i went from just one wife, no kids to two kids. Cause we have twin daughters. Mm -hmm. So I went from a family of two to a family of four overnight. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I, I mean, I leveled up in a big way when I had my kids, you know, and, and thankfully I've always had the support of my wife. Talk about a little bit more about that, just about, uh, drive, because I, I've experienced that too. Where like you, when you're single, you know, and you feel like you've got time, you don't have the sense of urgency all of a sudden, boom, you've got mouths to feed getting older kids are getting older like there's a little bit more like a sense of urgency would you mm. say yeah no doubt How? i you know i i think not only work wise but you know and i know we're going to get into this a little bit but um you know i'm i'm an avid reader and i i think i may have shared with you one thing that i've been loving and and like the last year or two that i've started doing that i never thought i would do is i started journaling but the idea behind it for me is like, it's, it's the gift that I'm going to be able to leave behind for my children mm -hmm. of, you know, money's great and all. Um, but, you know, you could leave behind money and ruin somebody's life. But if I can give you the roadmap of how to be successful in life, money or no money, you know, I feel like if I leave behind this journal, they can make their own money and I could give away all my money, you know, yeah. and they'll probably end up doing well and being successful just with the knowledge from that journal. So every single day, I feel like, man, I need to dive into some books. I need to read. I need to pray. I need to pour into myself so that I can actually fill that journal up with something of value, something that they'll be proud to have. Mm. So that's kind of cool. So the the bigger purpose behind journaling, because sometimes for me, the journaling has been tough because it's like, what's what's the point of it? But when it's when it's that roadmap, you're literally writing, creating for your children. That's That's a pretty cool legacy that you're crafting every single day in your writing. It, it's still tough to journal, sure. you know? I, I, yeah. I, I should be doing it more often than I am. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's jump into that, the, the avid reader that you are. I mean, when I connected with you through Dominic, who I've had on the podcast, he's like, dude, this guy reads like five books a week. He's like, I was like, what else does he do? He just sits and reads all day, you know? I don't know um, about five books a week, but I'm yeah, probably yeah. in five books, but I wouldn't say I finished five books a week. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're reading a couple of books a week though. Right. So you're yeah. reading a lot. Right. And, and you said that you really started taking this on. Was it around the time that you started working in, in what you're doing no. now? Or is it just the last couple no, of years? You know, and my, my mentors, which were great from the very beginning said, you know, leaders are readers. You know, if you mm -hmm. want to grow and get better, you need to be reading. Um, and it sounded like really great advice, but for a single guy, uh, I felt like I didn't have much time. And again, looking back, I'm like, boy, I had a lot more time than I do now, um, mm -hmm. but I wasn't making the time. And I didn't start reading for a few years, at least, I mean, probably five years in. You know, so out of the 13 years, I'm probably about eight years where I started reading. And, and I feel like every year I end up reading more than I did the before. It's nothing that I re I'm really track and, and, you know, measure or anything, mm -hmm. but um, more time goes into reading and self-development every single year um, than the previous. There's, there's no doubt about that. 
Would you say there's a difference between reading an actual book? Because you said you used to do audio books, uh, yeah. you know, when we chatted offline and now you do actual physical books. Is there a difference between books, digital versus hardbound versus podcast, videos, social media? It's like, there's a lot of personal development that you can get out there, right? You yeah. can fill yourself up. What's, what's, what have you found? You know, um, for me, the reason I did so much listening to books initially is because I did a lot of driving earlier on in my career, a whole lot of driving or flying when I was with corporate or whatever the case may be. And you can read a physical book, but although it gave me headaches, so I had a hard time doing it, but uh, at least on a plane, but um, a lot of it was somewhat out of necessity. But one thing that I think is important is like, I like to listen to books rather than music, even when I'm like working out but it's kind of hard to listen to a book and take notes when you're working out. You know what I mean? Totally. One totally. thing I will do is I'll pause and I'll type in my phone, some notes of like, Oh man, that like I, of everything I just heard, that's something I got to keep. I'm going to use this. I'm mm -hmm. going to implement this. I'm going to make it a part of my daily routine or, you know, who I am, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think the reason that it's so important to set aside time for development is so that you're at a desk with a piece of paper and a pen or a highlighter if you're reading an actual book and you're actually getting something from it and not just mm. listening to it to be entertained. Mm. You know, and that's where the idea, I just told you I was reading a book called Limitless by Jim Quick. And he said, don't listen to learn, listen to teach, right? So if I'm just listening to a book while I'm driving the car or listen to a book while I'm doing some cardio on a machine, I may have learned it, but I probably won't have the ability to teach it to somebody else. So the difference is like highlighting it writing it out, studying it, and making it a part of actually who I am so that now I can teach it to somebody else. Because that's really what it comes to. I mean, the, the challenge is like truly understanding the core concepts to be able to relate it, to articulate it to someone so that they get at least the general gist of it, right? Yeah. right. Versus, uh, I can think of, I think we talked about this, I'm like, there are certain books that I know and I could teach, you know, and then there's a ton of books. I'm like, that was a good book and I don't remember anything about it. Right. Right. So I've, I've got a bunch of those, especially from earlier on, where now I feel like I could probably don't don't quiz me on this, but I could probably tell you the last five to ten books and like give you some pretty good information. Yeah. Because I was sitting there reading the books as opposed to listening while I was hanging Christmas lights, which I do. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How start. much of it though? Yeah, I was gonna say how much of it though is. I'm just I don't know the answer to this. I don't know if you do either, but how much of it is possibly just where you are um, in your developmental stage of just being a man. Like, I feel like the brain, you know, really starts to settle in, especially the man's brain around the mid thirties, you know, it's like, and is that time where I just noticed in the last decade, have I really been able to start taking concepts and absorbing them, remembering them, teaching them, implementing them into my life, where even books through high school, college in my twenties, just kind of one in one year, not the other. Right. Have you found that there's been any shift for you between all the learning that you've take, took, taken on over the last decade or so? And has there been any part of it where like motivation has caused you? Is it like maybe having your, your girls that's like, okay, I've got to start retaining this, like you said, to add more value to them or to your employees? Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't remember if this is something we spoke on or not, but even earlier on, like I, I, you know, in the financial services industry, um, you know, I would learn something new, a, a technique or a presentation or whatever it may have been. Yeah. And I naturally immediately wanted to like practice on somebody, you know, mm -hmm. and, and in a way, not that I was doing it to teach somebody, sometimes it might've been my mother, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I wasn't trying to teach her how to do it. It wasn't going to help her out, but teaching her helped me out. And even when I was in nursing school, I would do group studies and not really listen to the group study, but when it was my turn to speak, I knew that when I could teach you and help you to understand it, I was going to get it down. Mm. So um, I, I sort of innately realized with myself that I was able to retain information better when I taught it to somebody else, when I actively yeah. practice it myself. Um, so I did a bit of that, but um, in, in recent years, I've been more diligent about doing it with mostly everything that I'm learning. Well, and you, you said every Friday or every Monday morning, you get your whole team together and you do just a little teaching of something that you probably read throughout the week. You got it. Every Monday yeah. at 12 noon, we've got a meeting and we've got, 
you know, 60, 70, 80 people on a Zoom meeting just like this. There's just a lot more faces. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm going over some recognition and doing some work things and, and all that. But uh, the primary purpose really is to just try to share something that I picked up on from the week, you know, something that I feel like could maybe impact their lives and, and help them in any way possible. Do you get feedback from them saying like, hey, man, that was like, Kevin, that, that one thing that you said a couple of weeks ago that really landed for me and I've been applying that and it's really helped change their psychology. Do you get that much? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a prep person. Like I, I like to really prepare for stuff. And I got to tell you, um, I was going to tell you before we started, but now that we're already in the thick of it, I'll, I'll share it with you now that um, I didn't prep for this. And the reason I didn't prep is because I'm um, funny that you asked that question, but every time I don't have the time that I wanted to prep is when I get the best feedback, when it's just mm. coming from the heart. You know what I mean? Um, yep. And I, I have an outline. Don't get me wrong. I didn't just throw everything out the window, but um, I, people tap, typically do their best when it's just it's when it's coming from somewhere real. You know, so I didn't want to script this thing out, although I could have, and that's like sort of who I am as a person, I would have rather have done that. It would have made me feel more comfortable. Um, but I, I feel like for the sake of the listeners that they deserve for it to come from somewhere real. See, it's so funny you say that because I totally agree. And I think when I first started my business in 2010 and I was doing videos and trying to get people into my gyms and I, I would just turn on my, my phone and I was attempting to uh, regurgitate this script that I had written half an hour before that I was trying to memorize. And then it was so inauthentic, you know, right. and I just, my eyes had no connect, you know, no feeling, no connection. Cause I was like staring at the video camera on my phone at the time, but I, I was up in my head. Right. right. I think people really get that. And I started, I was like, you know what, screw this. This is horrible. Like these videos just wing it. And if it's not, you know, I would rather connect with my audience and have it be authentic and right. Like, I don't even know what of, phone you would have been recording on. Was that like a razor or a Blackberry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blackberry. Um, yeah. Um, when was it? That was 2010. So it was one of the early iPhones, but okay. yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting for me to start to, to notice how when I finally surrendered to just not being perfect, essentially, which is kind of why I had been preparing, preparing in the first place man, I got so much more feedback to your point too. And then that translated into, okay, I'm scared to have this conversation with my lady, or I'm scared to have this conversation with a buddy or a client and thinking like, I got to have this thing whole all practiced out. And I'm like, no, just follow my heart, follow my gut, you know, and let that trans. And I feel like I get that too from you. It's like, you just follow your heart and your intuition. You have, you've poured enough good in, right? right. Week in and week out. When you're an amateur, out. I think I think it deserves a little bit more preparation. Yeah. Um, but at this point now, you know, 13 years into it, yeah, I've I've prepped for the last 13 years. I think I can wing it a couple of times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Question is, how do you find that? Of course, you can find that balance of having an outline. Make yeah. sure you stick to your points and your agenda while still being able to offer, you know, a lot of heart, a lot of vulnerability and transparency and let people really get to feel you then just feel like they're witnessing a speech you know where you're reading right. off a teleprompter you know right. so i mean you're doing that every monday at noon um we're doing it here now you know i'm talking about like just motivational speaking getting more of those speaking opportunities right would be something you'd like to do in the future yeah absolutely it sounds like that you just always had that kind of innate desire to be a coach uh or a teacher right yeah. Like you, you just get information that you want to, to teach. How much do you feel like your, your spouse or your kids benefit? Do they get annoyed at times or are they, are they happy with the wisdom that you've got uh, to instill in them? The kids are at an age where they, I think they enjoy it. You know, my one daughter is always excited if she sees me, you know, doing a video or she calls them commercials. I don't do any commercials, but she thinks it's a commercial. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. She gets excited. She thinks that's pretty cool. That might change. I'm sure it will. Um, yeah. uh, the wife, you know, it probably depends, you know, um, it probably depends. Some, sometimes I think she may enjoy it. And other times she's probably like, okay, time to turn it off, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just depends. But I do feel like there's a balance between, again, regurgitating positivity and self-help, if you will or really understanding where someone, really listening to what someone's challenge is and then supporting them 
through your own words, through your own ability to, to articulate something that could really support them to help them maybe have an aha or see a blind spot or a limiting belief that they have, you know? So right. I, I guess my question for you is like, how, how much do you really harp on you know, with all, all the people that you oversee, like their psychology being like the bottleneck to their success, long-term success. Do you really push on that a lot? Huge. Yeah. It, it's for me, it's, it's just about everything. I mean, mindset is everything you can do the wrong thing with a positive mindset and probably still end up with a good result. There's a fairly good chance you're going to end up with a good result, but you can be doing the right thing with a bad mindset or a negative mindset. And there's no chance whatsoever that you're going to end up with a good result. So the mindset is more important than the actual task that you're performing. Now the task is important. It can certainly influence it, no doubt about it. Um, but with the wrong mindset, it really doesn't make a difference. You know, if you're going to cut down a tree and you're using a baseball bat, you know, the, the, the tool matters, you know what I mean? The ax is going to be a lot easier than the baseball bat to cut down that tree, no doubt about it. The people that are listening to this might be like, you know, they're just, they just struggle with their mindset. Obviously that's why they're taking in this podcast. They're into podcasts, they're into personal development and growth. Um, but how do you really start to help someone that maybe you've have come underneath your tutelage, if, if, if you will, who really is maybe just down on themselves and have a, a pretty crappy mindset? How, how do you begin to kind of chip away and helping them kind of raise their game, if you will? Yeah, um, I think the easiest thing to do, we, we talked a little bit about this, but um, if you can win the morning, you're going to end up winning the day. And the only way to win the morning is mm -hmm. to pour into yourself before you have anything else that you need to do. And mm -hmm. the example I always give having, having young children is they may wake up on the wrong side of the bed and they, they have a hard time controlling that obviously being children, right? So if I didn't properly pour into myself in the morning. For me, it's always three things. It's mind, body, spirit, MBS. And this is something that I've learned from my mentors for years and years is if I've poured into my mind, I've read something positive, I've grown as a human being. If I've prayed or uh, meditated or done some yoga, and if I've done something for my body, I've lifted some weights, I've done some cardio, I've exerted some energy, burned some calories. Um, it's really hard to have a bad day after that, especially when I know that most people are not doing what I'm doing at that time of day. So my days usually start at 5.30, but sometimes earlier, sometimes later, depending on what I got going on. But normal is about 5.30 in the morning. And I complete all that before my actual tasks start. And the way that I explain it is if I've got one of my kids who woke up on the wrong side of the bed and they're in a bad mood and they're not listening and they got to get ready for school and the bus is going to be here any minute. And if I didn't pour into myself, I find myself overreacting to situations, which is unfair to my daughter. But if I've done everything I needed to in the morning, I tend to have more patience with my children. I tend to have right. more patience with the normal things of life that are going on. You know, and I, I talked to you before about, um, you know, that morning routine, it, it really sets up your whole day. It doesn't prevent the bad things from happening. The bad things are going to happen either way. But to me, it's like putting on armor. And we talked about The Mandalorian. It's a great show on Disney+. Plus. If you haven't seen it, this isn't a plug. I don't get anything, but, but it's a great show, right? It is and so good. Every time he gets more credits, he puts on armor. And for me, I read the Bible and I got a shoulder piece on. And then I, I work out and I got a chest piece on to protect me, right? you're still going to have bad things happen. Life is going to throw some punches at you. The difference is when I'm wearing armor, it doesn't hurt me like it would if I didn't put the armor on at the beginning of the day. So right. to me, the way you start your day is a foolproof way to be sure that you're going to have a good mindset through everything. Because again, you can't prevent the negative. All you can do is focus on how you respond to those events. Right. Well, one of the things that I think when we were chatting before uh, the other day, I was like, what is that? uh pamphlet or that book i'm sure you've read it the as a man thinketh by james yes. allen oh, you know yeah. right you know so he talks about uh you know gardening our minds you know that our minds are kind of like a garden and we have to literally kind of pull out the weeds right otherwise the reeds will overflow you talked about that too when we chatted the other day kind of like the whole idea of you you have a, you actually have a physical garden but how to go about tending that garden, not letting it 
go. Use that analogy again, because I thought it was pretty good in terms of like the garden of our life versus the actual physical garden that you have out back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, my wife and I love to, you know, cook fresh and use fresh ingredients and all that kind of stuff. So we, we like to, nothing crazy, but we've got a little garden in the backyard. And it's not all about the seeds that you're planting. It's, that's important. Again, you know, in, in as a man thinketh, he says, uh, nothing can come from nettles but nettles meaning you can't, you can't put wheat in the ground and expect berries to come out. You know what I mean? If you plant wheat, wheat's going to come up. That's what's going to come up, totally. right? Totally. So yep. You can't do one thing and expect something different. You know, one thing I've heard said before is I've never seen a positive life come from a negative mindset, mm. right? So again, you're expecting one thing, but that's not what you've planted, right? Yep. So yep. when we plant our seeds, you know, I'd say half the time is spent watering and nurturing, fertilizing, you know, the seeds that we've planted. But the other half, maybe more than half, is spent just immediately trying to eradicate the weeds that are coming up. And the thing about weeds and negativity is that they grow and consume at five times the rate of whatever good seeds you may have planted. Right. And in fact, an actual weed, when you're talking about a garden, is meant to steal away from all of the other plants. So they grow outward so that they can take more oxygen, so that they can consume more sunlight and mm. die out all of the other plants around them. So as good as you may be about planting good seeds, like I'm talking about in the morning routine, you also have to be able to, um, one of my mentors always said, think about what you think about. Mm -hmm. Think about what you think about. And it's such a novel concept, but it's so true. I mean, we have like 90,000 thoughts a day or something crazy like that. And 70,000 of them <clears throat> are negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. 70,000 of them are negative thoughts. So you know, you may have planted 20,000 good thoughts in your mind and maybe you were probably like pretty diligent about doing that. Like you created those good thoughts. It wasn't even by accident. You probably went out of your way to create some good positive things in your life. But if you've got 70,000 bad thoughts attacking the 20,000 good ones you planted, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, you, you got to make sure that you're thinking about what you think about. I, I have negative moments too, but um, what I've noticed over the years is that, uh, I could have, I could spill a cup of coffee on myself in the morning, you know, 10 years ago before I started reading and really focusing on self-development. And I mean, for, there was no, I may as well have stayed home. There was no way <laughs> I could have a good day after spilling a cup of coffee on myself. And that bad day, there's a good chance it may have turned into a bad week. Right. And that bad week, I've probably had some bad months <clears throat> and, and all because of a cup of coffee mm -hmm. that washed right out. Mm -hmm. Didn't even have to dry clean it. You know what I mean? And um, it's, it's, it's easy to spiral out of control, but I didn't have a morning routine. I didn't get to hit refresh every single morning. That cup of coffee from yesterday carried with me into the next day because I wasn't able to put on armor the second day. Mm. I wasn't diligent about that. Yeah. So now I have a negative thought just like anybody else, but it's, it's seldom that it continues. I usually realize like, man, man why am I saying that? Why, why am I talking to myself like that? Why am I acting this way? And I realized that it's not normal anymore. It used to be normal, but now it's starting to become abnormal and I, and I catch it much, much sooner. So much of what you just said, I mean, I open up and one of the things that I had highlighted from years ago is that uh, in As a Man, think of from James Allen, he says, a man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. Mm. You know, <clears throat> and that's it's absolutely true. But he goes on to say another part that I really highlighted, it's like talking about, you know, like putting on the armor. He says, man is made or unmade by himself in the armory of thought. He forges the weapons by which he destroys himself. He also fashions the tools in which he will build for himself heavenly mansions of joy, strength, and peace. You know, so I love how, yeah, he does really go into like, you kind of, you kind of have a choice. You can go down this route or this route, you know, and it just depends on what you feed or what you let grow in your thought. Right. And it's, it's as if, you or I, or, you know, can speak from a place of no longer having weeds come up. Like, no, weeds come up every day. They'll come up uh, if you're not tending to your marriage, they'll come up in your marriage or in your spirituality, right? In your faith, in your business, in your health. You just have to constantly be pulling them up and pulling them up before they get their roots too deep, you know, like pull yes. them up when they're small, right? Yes. I would, I would say. One question I wanted to ask you too is what, what is, what is, if you could put your finger on one thing, I don't know if that's possible, but let's just pretend that it is. What would be one thing 
that you could say that's helped you the most to propel you to where you are today? One thing. Boy, that's a tough one. Um, oh, man. I would say, you know, my answer has got to be um, self development, yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, I, really, my answer is probably mindset, mm-hmm. but you can't just, well, I'm going to have a good mindset today. Like out of thin air. I, I'm not sure that that's, I mean, it might be fleeting. You could maybe sort of trick your mind for a half a second, but right. if you've got no actual substance behind it of like, well, why am I going to have a good day? I woke up late. I forgot to brush my teeth because I was running out the door. Like how are you going to trick your mind for the whole day to have a good day when you started it so poorly? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, it's crazy to me that uh, people will wake up five minutes before their first meeting and expect to have a good day. I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just mind boggling to me, you know, and, um, you know, I, I happen to be going through a challenge right now as we speak, actually, where I, I, I've got a herniated disc. I just found out a, a, about two and a half weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I talk about mind, body, spirit every single morning, you know, pouring into myself. And, and one of those things have been kind of taken away from me, you know, because I, I, I can't really work out like I was. And, uh, you know, my wife is going to listen to this, so she'll find out. But, um, you know, I, I got in a really, really light workout this morning because I'm like, you know, I'm going to be talking on this podcast. I, I, I don't, I, I got to make sure I've got all three pieces in place uh, before I try to pour into some uh, listeners. So I, I did, it was a real light workout, Nancy, I'm talking to you. Um, but, you know, I didn't hurt myself, everything felt pretty good. Um, I, I just, you know, this is one of the hardest things that I've had to go through is like something that I'm so passionate about that I talk on all the time, but I actually do, you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Practicing what I preach. Um, it's been tough not to, not, not to have the normal routine that I do. Now I'm still reading, I'm still praying, I'm yeah. still doing the other pieces, but um, it's it's hard to to have that taken away. Well, and I think we all experienced uh, that in our own ways over the past year with COVID. You know, oh, yeah. with my with my gym being two blocks away and have that be shut down, like ah, you know. And I don't love to. I mean, I'm happy to work by my work out by myself, but I prefer to go to a gym. I'd rather lift or I'd rather do a class and to be here in my house kind of having cabin fever it's like you know what but what's the alternative really like do something right and i think to your point it's like man the, there's no faster way to change your uh your psychology or your mental state of where you are than to move you know like as tony robbins talking about like right emotion comes from motion right and that's why people who walk in the gym always walk out feeling better feeling more accomplished feeling like they're alive like we are made to move and so if you have that taken away from you like you're talking about like that's tough but there's still got to be something you can do right for for the most part of most people just getting out and going for a walk you know putting some good things in your ears listening to some audiobooks or whatever right can often yeah, change I, your I psychology the easiest way to have a positive mindset is you know i think i think a lot of happiness comes from growth mm-hmm. you know what i mean like if if you're growing if you're getting better then it provides hope for a better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if I can do something to grow myself today, right? I read something, I learned something I never knew before, right? And and I studied just about, just about everything. I I don't want to say everything, but I, I, there's a lot of things that I, that I read and and a lot, um, you know, some things I I read a little bit of, some things I read a lot of, um, but I try to read a little bit of everything, I guess. And, you know, you might read something about taxes, one little piece of information that could save you 10% on your taxes. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, yeah. that's one thing that you learned that, you know, 10% of no matter what you make is a lot of money. I don't care if you make $30,000 a year, an extra 3000 is, is pretty awesome. You know? So um, it's easier to feel good about tomorrow when you've done something for yourself today. Right. I, I, uh, makes me think of that. I know a way that you could spend only 15 minutes and spend save 15% of your taxes. You know, <laughs> I, I, they've done a good job of marketing in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but no, you're absolutely right. And I think it's, uh, if anyone's listening to this, I feel like, you know, it's, it's, you're like a professional, <laughs> you're in the big leagues of personal development. Like you are cranking on all cylinders in terms of what you're doing in your life in general, but also the amount of uh, information that you're ingesting and kind of metabolizing and then being able to share <clears throat> with others. But I would say it can also be very intimidating for someone to be like, I'm just, I'm a newbie. I'm a green, you know, 
greenhorn on this. I, where do I even begin? I would say like pick up a little pamphlet like As a Man Thinketh or where would you recommend someone just start if they're just starting to get into personal development? What maybe have been just your, some of your three, what are three books that you really enjoy that you feel like would really support someone if they don't have a lot of mentorship, they don't have a whole lot of support, but they want to get started and starting to fill their mind with a little bit more positivity than the negative thoughts that happen every day. Yeah. Um, well, I got to tell you, I think one of my all-time favorites is, is Jim Rohn. Uh, he's got a book called The Art of Exceptional Living, mm-hmm. and it's, it's fabulous. You know, he's, one thing he points out is he said, you know, in every house, this was a while ago, but he said in every mansion that you ever look at, there's always a library. There's always a library. He said, how come in the, in the cheap homes, the two bedrooms, the one bedrooms, how come there's never a library? So, you know, I think, I think what he talks about is like, you don't have to have a full library, but you need to start your library. Get one book. That's your library. That's how yeah. it starts is with just one book, you know? And uh, then you get a second and a third and, and I'm working right now on my library, you know? And I don't have enough to fill a library, you know, cause a lot of my books were audio for a long time. Um, but I told you, I mean, my, I think I buy more from Amazon than my wife does now because I'm constantly have books coming in. She's like, didn't you yeah. just order three books? I, four just came in the mail. I'm like, I know I've read them, but I, I but I need them for my library. You know? <laughs> so, um, you awesome. know, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. And, and to be able to share that with other people too, like, oh, you got to read this book, you know, and, and to be able to hand it to them uh, as, as a gift, I, I think is, they're my favorite gifts, you know? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the art of exceptional living is one, Jim Rohn, any, any others that you'd recommend? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it, I, I know this is probably one that, you know, people have heard certainly before, but um, how to win friends and influence people is a, is an absolutely fantastic book. Um, you know, not even just for business, for, for your personal life, for everything. And then, you know, maybe the last one I'd say is, um, I'm a huge one for uh, leadership and self-deception. And again, it sounds like, oh, it's a leadership book. And, and certainly it, it is, um, it applies. But again, it, I mean, you, if it'll make you a better husband, it'll make you a better father, it'll make you a better coworker or boss or whatever it is that you're trying to do, but it'll make you better for sure. Um, it's by the Arbinger Institute. So I think those are three kind of different, you know, slightly different books, you know, one that could be helpful in maybe sales or, you know, marketing. Um, and then, you know, a little bit more of your personal life and then one for leadership and development like Love that. It. Love it. I'm going to put those into the show notes for people to hyperlink to, but that's right. awesome. Um, if there was one kind of last, last thing that you might uh, pour into someone to say that, uh, again, someone who might be challenging uh, or being challenged in their lives or struggling, what would be one little nugget that you'd want them to if, if, if this is all they got, just maybe something that they could leave with that would be powerful mm. and helpful. Um, I, I'd say discipline, you know, um, discipline is what's going to bring you to your destiny. You know, my mentor used to use uh, 3D decisions determine destiny. Um, but that decision then has to be followed up with action, right? Which is going to come from discipline. You know, when the alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning, I, I, I'm, I don't wake up with a smile on my face and pop right out of bed with a bunch of pep in my step. Like, that's not usually how it goes. Usually I'm like, man, I was up way later last night than I was planning or I had back pain. I woke up three times in the middle of the night and, you know, I'm immediately trying to encourage myself to get more sleep. You deserve more sleep, Kevin. Don't worry about the morning routine. That can wait. You've been doing it for years now. One day won't kill you. Well, the truth is one day will probably turn into two, two will turn into a week, a week will turn into a month, you know? And um, I think that's, I think that's maybe the scariest part for me being a little bit out of commission with the body portion right now of like, I'm just like, I'm like every day I'm like, can I work out now? Can I, Hey, can I work out? You know? Cause it's like, I don't want it to keep going because it's going to get to a point to where it's more comfortable not working out than it is to work out. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it mentally in my head, uncomfortable, not working out. Although leisurely it's, it's, it's nice to sleep in a little bit later. I am, I'm not waking up at five 30 because obviously an hour of my workout's gone. So my, my morning routine looks a little bit different now. Um, but I'm not trying to get comfort out of that. It's, it's very right. uncomfortable. You know? Right. Maybe, maybe that's another place where you, you step up more of the mental workout. Right. Um, right. or like, especially I was telling people, uh, sometimes when we get hurt, it's kind of like, well, uh, you know, we get injury and, and we don't end up working out. So then like screw the eating, you know, 
when in reality that eating I'm becomes struggling even more. a lot harder on my diet right now yeah. a lot yeah. harder yeah. you know a lot harder it's so much easier to do when I'm working out every single day and um, I've slipped more now in the last two to three weeks than I have probably in the last three to six months yeah you know um, so yeah I, I agree a hundred percent I think it's more challenging uh, not being able to do it Correct. And I think that's just where the, the call to arms comes, if you will, to say, you know what, okay, I, I'm not able to do what I want to do physically. Well, that means I need even more so to be cleaner with my nutrition. But that, isn't that funny how that doesn't work? It's like we're, we're working out and to support the working out, we want to eat healthy. But yep. if things, if one of the little, you know, chinks in our armor gets broken, then we're like, ah, screw it. I'll eat a cookie. I'll do this. Like, then it does start to you have to break yourself out of that downward spiral. And I feel like if someone's watching or listening to this, watching or listening, like that's the key is like, even with one, you know, break of the, the habits might start to spiral you downwards. The inverse is true too. We're like, you feel like you're down, like just wake up, make, wake up 15 minutes earlier, take a cold shower or just type in something to motivational uh, video into YouTube and listen to that, you know, before you start, or like I said, listen to a podcast, whatever, but it starts to get you going, like you said, to win the day, right? I think that's a pretty yeah, journey important of a thousand thing. steps starts with one. So again, you were talking about being intimidated by reading a couple of books a week or what have you. Read a chapter, yeah. one chapter a week, you know, go on a walk. Don't, don't try to lift 300 pounds. That's not a good idea. If you haven't been working out, you're probably going to hurt yourself. You know, go for a walk, go for a jog, go walk up the stairs and of taking the elevator, small steps, um, to create the habit and then you can start increasing from there but just do it every day do something small even but do it every single day and make a habit out of it so different like yeah you mentioned that earlier it's like there's just no way for you to snap your finger and one day be in shape right. if you're going from out of shape to in shape because you went to the gym once like no you have to go and the same thing is with your mindset as well right like you just can't snap and all of a sudden you've got an, an amazing fortified mindset you know impenetrable but you have to work on building up that that daily armor that mental fortress if you will day by day and it sounds like you've you've really done that but it's also good to hear that you know you're not without challenge without struggle no times doubt. right yeah no doubt yeah you no know doubt. i love uh i forget who says it but they say uh you know motivation doesn't last uh, but neither does bathing. That's why it's recommended to do it every single day. <laughs> you know, so again, um, you know, maybe you lost the day today. Just make sure you win the morning tomorrow. And I'll bet you end up winning the day. Yeah. So you can't win them all. You know, there's too many games to be played. You, you can't you can't shoot 100 um, percent, but you can't let yesterday's defeat ruin tomorrow's battle. Mm -hmm. Amen so, to that. Oh, if people. Yeah. If you wanted to thank you for all this. I think it's it's so good just to hear because it's like the it's the foundational blocks to having not only a quote unquote a successful life also means that you enjoy it that you're fulfilled that you yeah. are loved and that you love yourself you know so much of that all comes from stems from your mindset right so um, if anyone heard this and really wanted to connect with you whether it be to do a, a keynote or to just speak with you about maybe having them you support them. How can they reach you? What's the best way to connect with you? Um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we're on all of it. Um, KevinHoltz.com is the website for any speaking engagements, anything that like that, that they might want. And then obviously I have my business uh, websites as well, um, which if you just search Kevin Holtz will automatically pop up or uh, Kevin Holtz Agency, Holtz Agency, American Income Life uh, okay. for, the, for the business that I'm in. So amazing. Well, thank you, man. Thank you for sharing your light and your gifts and your knowledge with uh with the world for kind of pouring yourself into to others and taking some time just to to give so i really appreciate you having you on this has been really really insightful awesome well i appreciate everything that you're doing for sure i started listening to the podcast when uh dominic had told me about it and uh, yeah. it's, it's become part of my routine for sure so i appreciate that's you. awesome Oh yeah, man. That's uh, part of, like Tony says, Tony Robbins says the secret to living is giving, you know? So a lot yeah. of it is, like you said, if, uh, or like a Jim Quick said to listen to teach versus don't listen to learn. And I feel like a lot of times I want to, to listen and then be able to teach something, you know? So you're doing the, the same thing. So thank you, brother. Thank you all to, to listen, uh, for listening, I should say, for tuning in, watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, um, if you'd like to, 
shout at me, give me your feedback on this or any other episode, feel free to hit me up on johnnyking.com or on any of my socials. But until we meet again, have an amazing day. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Johnny.